Alright, we had a look at what happens when light passes from air into glass and it bends towards the normal. But what happens if we look at when light goes from glass back out into air? I'm going to use a semicircular block for this. And there's a reason for using a semicircular block, which I'll show you in a wee second. Right? But if we just shine the light straight through it, straight through, it just carries on as normal. The light's not deflected at all. It doesn't change direction. And the reason for using a semicircular block here is, because it's semicircular, I can shine light in at any angle that I want. Right? Let's just pick a few angles here. We could go at 20, 40 and 60 degrees. This time I'm going to put my protractor on this way. Now, I'm going to measure 20, 40 and 60 degrees. So those little marks there are showing me 20, 40 and 60 degrees from the normal that I'm going to draw through the centre of the block. I'm going to join those up like this. Very carefully. So there's 20. I'm going to shine a ray of light in at 20. And because this is a semicircular block, then these lines that I am drawing are all radiuses or radii of the circle. And because each ray is a radius of the circle, it's actually hitting. It's hitting the arc of the circle at 90 degrees. So these rays are going in, and therefore they're not being bent when they go into the glass. Because all we want to investigate here is what happens when it comes back out of the glass. So it's going straight into the glass, but what happens when it emerges again? Remember, this one is 20, this one's 40, this one's 60. Let's put the glass on, shine a ray of light through, and see what happens at each of these different angles. We'll do zero first. Remember, zero is straight down. Or straight up. If I shine that ray of light straight through the glass, it just goes straight through the other side. It's undeflected because it's travelling along a normal and exits along the normal. It just carries on as normal. But what happens if we go in at 20 degrees? At 20 degrees, the refracted ray is bigger than 20 degrees. This ray here. Now, I'm going to measure that. If I go to 40, look at the refracted ray in air. It's much, much bigger than 40. Now, also, look, we're starting to get a little bit of reflection here. And if I go to 60 degrees, let me put a wee mark on it, my 40 degrees. Put a wee mark there. All right. If I go to 60 degrees, look what's happened. It's all reflected back. In fact, this side of the semicircular block is behaving like a mirror. And the law of reflection, and I'll put a couple of dots on there as well, the law of reflection tells us that the angle it goes in is the same as it's reflected back at. So if it's going in at 60 degrees, it's getting reflected at 60 degrees. I'm going to mark all these rays on so we can measure them and see what happens. So my 20 degree ray in the glass was refracted like that. My 40 degree ray in the glass was refracted like that. And my 60 degree ray in the glass was reflected back like that. Now let's measure these angles. I put the light on. Shed a bit of light on the occasion. So, when my ray went in at 20 degrees, it was refracted back out again at this angle. Put my protractor on. Put it on. Right on the normal. It's refracted out at that's about 34 degrees. 34. My 40 degree ray came out here. 
it's refracted at much, much, much bigger angle. Match up my normal in the side of my block. It's about 73 degrees. 70, 73 degrees from the normal. And my 60 degree ray is totally internally reflected. And it's reflected at, let's put my protractor on here, and it's reflected at, that's exactly 60, exactly 60. So when we went in at 60, it was reflected at 60. And when all the light is totally internally reflected, there's a name for that. It's called Total Internal Reflection. Catchy, yeah? But the big question is, at which point do we go from the light being refracted to the light being totally internally reflected? There must be a critical angle at which that happens. I need a new bit of paper. Or I can use this bit. Let's turn it over. Let's draw around this block again. Remember, when the light hits the glass straight on, it passes straight through. When we make that angle bigger, hey, I'm going to shine my light. Let's put that glass block on. When I shine the light straight through, it goes straight through. Let me put the light on. It's passing straight through. As I move my ray box now around, I'm trying to point the ray always at the middle of the flat side of the semicircular block. The angle in the glass is smaller than the angle in the air. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Now the angle in the air is getting much, much bigger. Eventually we're going to get to a critical point. And the critical point is when the light in the air can no longer be refracted. In fact, that refracted ray reaches 90 degrees. We're almost there. In fact, you can always see it splitting out into a spectrum over here. Once that refracted ray completely disappears, and it's now, then we have reached what's called the critical angle for the glass. It's the angle at which the refracted ray is 90 degrees. We come back down again. You see the refracted ray comes back. There it is. Come back round again. Eventually we reach a critical angle. I wonder what that critical angle is. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's there. Let's measure that critical angle. So I'm going to put a couple of marks on my diagram. Here, here, and over the other side. Here, here, and I'm going to join them up. I'll put the lights on. There's the ray going in. There's the ray coming back. It's been totally internally reflected. But the good big question is, what angle did that happen at? And this material here is perspex. Hmm? And let's measure that angle. So, for our perspex, the angle at which the refracted ray was 90 degrees, and which above which all the light is totally internally reflected, is 42 degrees. So at 42 degrees, the light was no longer refracted, it was totally internally reflected. Let's see if we can do a little bit of maths and try and tie in this idea of the critical angle with what we've done already about Schnell's law and refraction. Right, here's a diagram showing three rays of light passing through a block of Perspex, and Perspex got a refractive index of 1.5. Now let's consider this first diagram, where the light 
is travelling through the glass at quite a small angle, let's say 20 degrees. Now we could work out what the angle in air would be using Schnell's law. Remember, N equals the sine of the angle in air over the sine of the angle in glass. So we can rearrange that to find the sine of the angle in air, which will be the refractive index, times the sine of the angle in glass. Now if we substitute our values in, 1.5 times the sine of 20, that will give us the angle in air is equal to 31 degrees. Now the thing to notice here is that the angle in air is bigger than the angle in glass. So if we keep increasing the angle in glass, then we get to a certain critical angle. And at the critical angle in glass, the angle in air has reached 90 degrees. It's a right angle in air. So if we write down our Schnell's law relationship again, the refractive index is equal to the sine of the angle in air over the sine of the angle in glass. And in this case, at the critical angle, N equals sine 90 over the sine of that critical angle in the glass. Now, as you should know, sine 90 is equal to 1. So therefore, N equals 1 over the sine of the critical angle, and that relationship is on your relationship sheet. And therefore, for perspex, that's got a refractive index of 1.5, we can rearrange this to find the critical angle for perspex. It will be 1 over 1.5 is equal to sine c. So sine c, if you do that in the calculator, is 0 0.666666. And shift sine it and you get a value for c of 42 degrees. And that's why in our demo, we found the critical angle for perspex was 42 degrees. That's the angle at which the refracted ray is at 90 degrees. Anything bigger than that then, at say 50 degrees, we get total internal reflection. Right, time for a couple of examples, I think, that include refraction and critical angle. So, Let's look at this first one. We've got an equilateral triangle of perspex. It's got a refractive index of 1.48. And we've got a ray of red laser light that's entering the glass at 30 degrees to the normal, as shown. Now, we know that that ray is going to be refracted. It's going to bend towards the normal. And we could find out that angle by using the relationship N equals the sine of the angle in air over the sine of the angle in glass. Rearrange it to find the sine of the angle in glass. It's going to be sine 30 divided by the refractive index 1.48. And if you do that on your calculator, work out sine C and then shift sine it, we get an angle of 20 degrees. Now we can add that onto our diagram. Remember it bends towards the normal. So we've got a smaller angle in the glass and that angle's 20 degrees. Now, the ray will then continue on its journey and it may well come out the block on the other side. So let's put another normal and we want to know that angle. Now, what's that angle going to be? Now we can use a little bit of geometry to help us here. That's an equilateral triangle. All those angles are 60 degrees. And here's the sneaky bit. The angle between the normal and the side of the triangle is a right angle, 90 degrees. So see that angle there, 20. Then that other missing angle there must be 70. Now 70 and 20 is 90 because that's a right angle between the normal and the side of the prism. Now if we know that that's 70, then we can work out the angle on the other side. It'll be 50 degrees because the total angle in a triangle always adds up to 180. And if we know that's 50, then the angle we're looking for is 40 degrees. And we can then use that 40 degrees as the angle in glass and work out the angle in air 
on the other side using Schnell's law n equals the sine of the angle in here over the sine of the angle in glass and this time we're working out the sine of the angle in air as it exits the block well it'll be n times the sine of the angle in glass which in this case refractive index was 1.48 times the sine of 40 and if you do that in your calculator end up with theta in air as it exits is equal to 72 degrees and we can add that onto our diagram as well so the ray going from left to right there follows that path as it enters and exits the glass now we did that whole example just by using Schnell's law but what happens if we replace that perspex block with a glass block that's got a refractive index of 1.62 it becomes a lot more tricky. Watch this. Let's draw our triangle again. Remember the refractive index this time is 1.62. It's a equilateral triangle and the ray is still going in. Same angle, 30 degrees. And it's going to bend towards the normal. But that angle this time will be different. If we do N equals the sine of the angle in air over the sine of the angle in glass... Rearrange it to find the sine of the angle in glass. It will be sine 30 over 1.62 this time. And that will give us an angle of 18 degrees. And we can add that onto our diagram. And then using a little bit of geometry, we can figure out that the angle above that 18 degrees, which makes up the right angle, will be 72 degrees. Then working our way around that triangle, the angle on the other side, 180 minus 60 minus 72, gives us 48 degrees. Now if I put a normal on, then the angle between the normal and the real light must be 42. Because 42 and 48 adds up to 90. And now we can use our Schnell's law again to predict what the refracted ray would be. So n equals the sine of the angle in air over the sine of the angle in glass. This time we want the angle in air when it exits the block. So it's 1.62 times the sine of 42. And if you do that on your calculator, that's sine 42 times 1.6. Hmm. Try that again. I'm getting a math error. Hmm. No matter how many times you try and do that calculation, you'll get a math error because you're trying to work out something that doesn't happen. No refraction takes place. The light isn't refracted. It's going to be totally internally reflected. If this happens when you're trying to work out an angle in air, the light doesn't come back out into the air. It's totally internally reflected at the same angle that it hit the side of the block so that's 42 degrees. Now, we're going to get a wee bit cluttered down in this corner. So that'll be 48, that's 60. So that little angle in there will be 72. They all add up to 180. Let's zoom in a wee bit. So if that angle is 72, that tiny wee angle in there must be 18. And when it exits the glass, it must exit the glass at 30 degrees again. That's similar to what happened when the ray first entered the glass. 30 degrees in air, 18 degrees in the glass. Now, that is a much more tricky example. We've got refraction, we've got critical angle, we've got total internal reflection. Far more complicated to do because of the total internal reflection. Remember that sine C equals 1 over N. In this case, if the refractive index was 1.62, the critical angle is 38 degrees. So anything greater than 38 degrees in the glass, you'll get total internal reflection. There you go then. See you in the next one.